Good morning. Thank you for the special hymn because he lives. And thank you for uh, all of you. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus who laid down his life uh, for us to give us eternal life. Thank you for uh, John's Gospel Bible study. Lord, please bless today's message as I am uh, serving your word. Please have mercy on me uh, because I'm not worthy uh, to deliver this message. Please have mercy on me and uh, uh, be with me with your uh, Holy Spirit and uh, may the Holy Spirit speak to each one of us personally uh, through this message. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The title of today's message is Jesus Gives Us Eternal Life. Let's read the key verse 28 uh, together. Okay, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. In the last passage, we learned that Jesus is the good shepherd because he lays down his life for his sheep. In today's passage, Jesus teaches us why we must believe in Jesus and what he gives to those who believe in him. The key word in today's passage is eternal life. What is eternal life? Eternal life is a spiritual life. It's not about length, it's about the quality. And eternal life is a life without the elements of death. How can we have this eternal life? Let's listen to Jesus' teaching. Part one, Jesus gives us eternal life. When and where did Jesus deliver this message? Look at verses 22 and 23. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. It was winter, and many people gathered in Jerusalem for the feast of dedication, also known as Hanukkah. You know Hanukkah, right? meaning to dedicate. In 168 BC, after the death of Alexander the Great, Antiochus Epiphanes, king of Syria, invaded Jerusalem and captured the city. He marched into the Jer Jerusalem temple and put a statue of the great god Zeus and sacrificed a pig on the altar of incense. This provoked a revolt. A Jewish leader named Matthias and his family fled to the hills and assembled an army, a kind of guerrilla army as uh, led by his son Judah, who was nicknamed Maccabee. So this army known as the Maccabees mounted a revolt against Antiochus. Finally, in uh, 165 BC, the Jews drove out Antiochus and his army and regained the control of their land and rededicate the temple. So the Feast of Dedication commemorates this rededication of Jerusalem temple since then. At the time of Jesus, formal temple worship had been uh, restored. That, uh, that shows the Maccabean revolt. You see the, the candle stand, right? 
the feast of dedication. Uh, 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 so, but the original function of the temple had not yet been restored. Can can you show us? Uh, yeah, the feast of dedication day, and also known as feast of uh, illumination or feast of uh, lights. According to verse. 23, Jesus was walking in Solomon's colonnade, which was located on uh, the eastern side of the temple. Look at verse 24. Okay. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. The Jews complained that Jesus was keeping them in suspense. What is suspense? Suspense is a, a state of uh, mental uncertainty which, with a uh, degree of anxiety. The Jews were extremely anxious and nervous because of Jesus. What was the reason? Since Jesus had performed many miraculous signs, they were afraid that if Jesus would go on like this, everyone would believe in him, and then the Romans would come and take away both their temple and their nation like Antiochus did before. But it was not Jesus who was keeping them in suspense. It was their unbelief that was keeping them in suspense. For those who deeply trust in God, suspense is not necessarily a bad thing. But rather, suspense can be an exciting experience as long as we have faith in God. For example, because of his deep trust in God, David had no fear even when he walked through the darkest valley. In 25, verse 25, Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me. Jesus had performed many miracles. For example, in John chapter 2, Jesus changed tasteless uh, water into choice wine uh, at a wedding banquet. In chapter 4, Jesus healed a royal official's son who was about to die. In chapter 5, Jesus healed a man who had been invalid for 38 years. In chapter 6, Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. In chapter 9, Jesus opened the eyes of a blind man. All these miracles were the signs by which Jesus proved that he was the Son of God and the Messiah. But the Jews didn't even believe these clear facts. Why were, so, why were they so determined not to believe? Look at verse 26. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. They didn't believe in Jesus, not because they had no evidence, but because they were not Jesus' sheep. This means that they did not belong to Jesus, even though they were very religious. They belonged to something else. They belonged to their father, the devil. If they were Jesus' sheep, they would have believed in Jesus and accepted his words. But since they belonged to the devil, they rejected Jesus' words, uh, Jesus words and works. As a result, they had no relationship, spiritual relationship with Jesus. However, though small in number, there are Jesus' sheep. 
Are we Jesus' sheep? <laughs> yes, we are. Look at verse 27. Let's read uh, 27, verse 27 together. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. There are many things we want to do and have to do. But the most important thing we must do as Jesus' sheep is to listen to Jesus' voice and follow him. The reason is simple. It's because Jesus is our shepherd and we are his sheep. When we listen to Jesus' voice and follow him, he always guides us along the right path. For example, the man born blind listened to Jesus' voice and followed him. When he listened to Jesus' voice and followed him, Jesus healed him completely, both physically and spiritually, and displayed the work of God through his changed life. These days, not many people listen to Jesus' voice. Even many Christians just hear Jesus' word only once, once a week. They do not listen to Jesus' voice. They think they are too uh, busy. So their relationship with Jesus is very shallow. They have, no, they have no strong motivation to follow Jesus. So they follow Jesus. They do follow Jesus, but at a distance. May God restore our spiritual desire to listen to Jesus' voice and to follow him uh, more closely. Look at verse 28a. What does Jesus give to his sheep? Jesus said, I give them eternal life. Jesus gives us eternal life. This is the purpose of God sending Jesus to this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Not just the life, eternal life. In order to give us eternal life, Jesus sacrificed his life for us. When we study the life of Jesus, we see that he had no house to live in. He had no financial sources to support his disciples. He had no money or other things he could give them. But he always cared for them personally and collectively. He served them with his life. In the course of serving them, Jesus suffered much receiving many trials by the Jews. Finally, he was crucified on the cross and shed his blood to wash away all our sins. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Praise Jesus, who suffered and died to give us eternal life. Amen. What is eternal life? Eternal life is not just a very, very long <laughs> life. First of all, to have eternal life means to be saved from the result of sin and eternal condemnation. Even though we could live long, say until 120, if we live in sin, we will never be happy even one second. But when we believe in Jesus, Jesus forgives our sins and sets us free from condemnation. We will no longer be tormented by sin. 
And to have eternal life means to have peace and joy in our hearts. Money can buy convenience and luxury. But money doesn't buy peace and joy. In contrast, if, if we have eternal life, it gives us peace and joy. And we can have a sound sleep at night. And to have eternal life means to have true satisfaction in our hearts. Nothing of this world can fill the emptiness in our hearts. But when we accept the love of Jesus, it fully satisfies our souls and we are not thirsty anymore. And those who have eternal life are moved by the love of God and they love others, and not because they are angels, but because they have eternal life, which is the source of pure joy and pure love in them. In addition, eternal life gives us a living hope in the kingdom of God. If we have eternal life, we can live as holy pilgrims, in this world. We can have true freedom in our hearts because we no longer worry about uh, worldly things. We can serve God freely without a sense of loss because we believe that God will reward us for all the sacrifices we have made for the kingdom of God. Nowadays, most people just want uh, temporary uh, gratification instead of eternal life. But to those who do not have eternal life, living in this world is not a blessing. It's a curse because there are too, so many troubles and problems. So they seek to find every possible way to relieve their agonized souls as they enjoy the momentary pleasures of sin, their hearts and minds are being corrupted. Some people even die. In short, what people need most is eternal life not material blessings and physical pleasures. A man named Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19 was a cheap tax collector and was wealthy, but his heart was empty because he had no eternal life. But when he met Jesus and repented of his sins, he had eternal life. Steve Jobs, you know Steve Jobs? He died at the age of 56. I am 56. Of pancreatic cancer. Before he passed away, he left these words. In others' eyes, my life is an epitome of success. However, aside from work, I have little joy. At this moment, lying on the sick bed, and recalling my whole life, I realized that all the recognition and wealth that I took so much pride in have paled and become meaningless in the face of impending death. Non-stop pursuing of wealth will only turn a person into a twisted being just like me. The wealth I have won in my life I cannot bring with me. You can employ someone to drive the car for you, make money for you, but you cannot have someone to bear the sickness for you. Material things lost can be found, but there is one thing that can never be found when it is lost, life. But I'm not sure he knew about eternal life. 
he knew about the importance of physical life. How then can we have eternal life? In order to have eternal life, we must believe in Jesus. John chapter 6, verse 40 says, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. To believe in Jesus means to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior. When you must eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood, John 6, 54 says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. This means that we must believe that Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross for our sins. When we believe that Jesus died for our sins, we are forgiven by God and can forgive those who have sinned against us. In John chapter 3, 14, 15, Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. Amen. Part 2, Jesus guarantees our salvation. Look at verse, uh, can we read verse 28 together? 28. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus promises God's per perfect protection for us. He says, they shall never perish. This means that we will never lose our salvation we have received through Jesus. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, being confident, of, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Jesus also promises that no one will snatch us out of his hand. The devil tries hard to snatch us out of Jesus' hand. He disheartens us by accusing us of our sins. He sends persecution against us, even through our family members. But Jesus promises that no one will snatch us out of his hand. And once we are in Jesus' hand, we are safe and sound for eternity. Amen. In verse 29, Jesus says, My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. Jesus emphasizes that our Father God is greater than anything else in the world. Therefore, as long as we are in God's hand, in, uh, no one can snatch us out of his hand. If God protects us, no one can harm us. Romans 8, 31b says, If God is for us, if God is for us, who can be against us? In verse 30, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Jesus and God the Father are one and protect us together. Therefore, we don't need to worry about our future uh, security. 
verse 31 and 32. Upon hearing Jesus claim that he was equal with God, again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? If they saw the miracles Jesus had performed, they should have praised him. Instead, they tried to kill him, stone him. It seemed that Jesus had been serving them in vain. But he was not discouraged because he believed that God had accepted all his sacrifices and efforts. The Jews replied in verse 33, We are not stoning you for any good work, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. They excused their hostile conduct against Jesus as due to his blasphemy because they thought that Jesus was a man, just a mere man. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I have said, you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be set aside. What about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said, I am God's son? Jesus continues in 37 and 38, Do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Jesus wanted them to believe in him and have faith in God. But they didn't listen. They didn't listen. And again, they tried to seize him in order to kill him. But he just escaped their grasp. Their unbelief and wickedness were persistent. Because of these unrepentant Jews, Jesus had great sorrow and pain in his heart. However, there were God's remnant people. Verse 40 through 42. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. There he stayed and many people came to him. They said, Though John never performed a sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. These people were so precious in the eyes of God. In conclusion, Jesus gives us eternal life. It's a, it's a gift. It's, it's not a reward. It's, it's, a, it's a free gift. The most precious gift of God for all human beings. When we have eternal life, we are happy and free, whatever problem we may have in our practical lives. And we can sacrifice, we can serve God and sacrifice ourselves for the work of God with the living hope. Because you have eternal life and a conviction of the final victory. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us eternal life through uh, Jesus' uh, sacrifice. Lord, uh, help us to be able to uh, enjoy 
uh, this eternal life and serve you uh, freely and uh, more uh, sacrificially. Lord, please uh, also help us to be a good sheep, good sheep of, of Jesus and listen to his voice and uh, uh, follow him uh, faithfully as his uh, good sheep, Lord. Uh, and help us to be also uh, good shepherds uh, for other people other people uh, and, and sacrifice ourselves for them so that they too can receive, can have uh, eternal life through our uh, prayer, uh, through our preaching, and uh, uh, through our uh, sacrifice. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.